Today on YouTube 101, general settings. That doesn't sound exciting, but it is important. Welcome to Mina Studio. My name is Nathan. With me as always is my settings maestro, Ronald. And welcome to YouTube 101 for churches. We're gonna demystify some of the YouTube options and features that you might encounter. So today we're gonna to take a look at the general settings screen. Now that may not sound very exciting, but there might be some very important changes you need to make in that screen. Of course, to do so, we have to go to the YouTubes. So when you start your YouTube channel, there might be some settings you need to go in and change, or you might just need to change them as your channel changes. So you get to those down here at settings. These are your general channel settings. You have several options. We'll go through each of them and kind of decide if they're relevant to you or not. General, we just have default units, US dollar. That's very general, I guess. Okay, we go down to channel and we get some more info. I don't know why that's the only thing under general. Okay, we go to our channel and here we have channel information. So you can see my name. If you need to change or set up your channel name, you'll do that actually in a, your church's Google account. Say what country your church is in, and then you can add keywords for your entire channel. So these aren't keywords for certain videos. These describe your entire channel. So if you are a church, it might be things like the city you're in, maybe your denomination, your church name, maybe some of your staff members who you want to tag in there. Could be anything that tells about your church in general. If we go over to advanced settings here, you'll see the um, this is that made for kids section we talked about earlier. This is setting it for your entire channel. As I said, most churches will want to use, I want to review this setting for every video because you might have a bunch of video not made for kids, but occasionally video content made for kids. So I would be safe and select, I want to review this for every video. And then you'll just select that in every video. Here you can link, link your Google ads account if you're gonna use Google ads, auto-generated caption, you might want to click don't show potentially inappropriate words. Uh, I don't know, maybe your pastor costs a lot and you don't want to do that, I don't know. Um, you can just choose the display the your amount of subscribers on your channel, that's up to you. You can disable interest-based ads. So this will not get rid of ads, this will just get rid of ads that are personalized to people. Then your channel visibility, I'm sure you'll want your channel to be public. And then feature eligibility, your default features should be pretty much on automatically unless you've done something very wrong. <laughs> and then when you first start, you will have to do a phone verification because you can't upload videos longer than 15 minutes, have custom thumbnails or live stream or appeal content ID claims, those copyright claims until you phone verify. And I assume as a church, you'll want to live stream. So you'll need to phone verify before you can do that. Next is upload default. So this is very useful. So when you upload a video, it doesn't just come up with a blank everything and you have to type in everything every time. If there's something that you put in all of your videos all of the time, you can put them here in upload defaults. And whenever you upload a new video, those will show up and then you can go in and change whatever you want to. So for you, you might have a link to your church website or resources or a, even a sermon series info you could change when the sermon series changes. You change those all here on upload defaults. Select your upload default visibility. I default to unlisted just in case I accidentally upload something and I want to change it later. I can make it public when I'm ready and it doesn't automatically go public. And then you have tags that would apply to all of your videos like your church name and your location and things like that. Advanced settings. Again, these are still upload defaults what the videos default to. These are the more options that we talked about in the upload de details video. Your standard YouTube license, your category will probably be nonprofit for churches. Your languages, you can um, choose whether you want comments. We want all comments or you want to approve the comments before they show up. Again, I talked about all these in the upload details video and then monetization. Again, these are the defaults. So when you upload a new video, all of this stuff will automatically fill in and show up and then you go in and change whatever you need to. Next, we have permissions. This is just where you add and remove people who can control your YouTube page. Like if you need to add a staff member so they can update your YouTube page, you would add them here. Next, we have community. So these are like um, users you need to block, moderators, 
Um, if you have people, if you have a really large church and lots of interaction on your live stream, you might have other staff members you use as moderators. You can enter those here. Um, approved users, hidden users, hopefully those guys aren't watching this video. So you can hide users if you need them to not be able to comment on your live streams and such. And then defaults, again, old inappropriate comments or allow all comments, that sort of thing. And then finally, agreements is just any agreements you sign, like I'm a YouTube partner for monetizing, so I did sign these agreements. Your church might not have those. So those are all the settings. Again, you're not going to have to mess with a whole lot of those. You really just want to make sure your channel info is right. Make sure your upload defaults include all the information that will be on all of your videos so you don't have to type it in every time. Add the people that need to manage your uh, YouTube channel, and then you can handle your community and such. Thank you for joining me. I really do hope you and your church found this video helpful. And stick around because more YouTube 101 for churches is on the way. So good luck on YouTube. And if you did find this video helpful, please subscribe to Mina Studio. I will see you back here soon.